While it's not commonly used as a motion graphics tool, you will find that Photoshop offers a timeline that gives you some rudimentary animation abilities. This can be used for a simple logo animation, and I like to do the rubber banding approach, where we set keyframes for the landing positions, then stretch the pieces out and have them land into their final landing spot. Here's how it works. I'm going to go ahead and make a new timeline, and that pops up. And what's needed here is I'm going to want a video timeline. So I'll convert this to video. That gives me each layer. Now, I'll go ahead and press Control minus to shrink that window down a bit and just make it easier to see all my layers. Looks pretty good. If I need to, I could change the timeline frame rate to assign a true video frame rate. And if necessary, I could choose the panel options to make it a bit easier to see all my thumbnails. All right, that looks pretty good. I left a copy of the logo on the bottom there just for reference. Let's merge the box and stroke together. Select both layers and press Control or Command E. Makes it a bit simpler. And I like that. And what we're going to do is make each of these a smart object by right clicking and converting to smart objects. What this does is it will embed a full resolution copy inside the layer and it opens up the ability to use the transform command with keyframes. There we go. Twirling each one down, we can start to animate. Let's take the word raster first. I'll come to the three second mark. Twirl it down and you'll see the keyframe for transform. I'll turn that on to enable a keyframe and then come up to the beginning here and press Control T. This allows me to adjust as well as rotate and move. Pressing return, you'll see that the object lands into place. Now that worked nicely for a simple animation. Let's keep going with another layer. We'll grab vector here, turn on the stopwatch and the visibility, and we'll jump back to the same starting point. Control T, there it is. If I want to adjust where it rotates around, I could drag the rotation point there. And what I'll do is rotate this and pull it off screen. And they both land at the same time. That's looking pretty good. I'll just scale this first one up. And pull that off a bit. And they tumble into place. Now if you want to change the stacking order, just adjust the heights in the layers panel. And you'll see that one will sit on top of the other now. All right, that's looking nice. Right about in the middle. I'm going to bring on the other two boxes. So there's my red square and my black square. And I'll just use the opacity controls here. And we'll set those to zero. And then go a little bit forward to about 310. And take them back up to 100. So if we play that back, you'll notice that they animate by fading into place as things go past. Remember, if you'd like, you can uncheck linear interpolation, and it will have a little bit more smoothing into place. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's just round that out. We've got our line, and I want that to build right as those come in. So we'll do transformation. There we go. And coming to the top here, we'll simply press Control T and we'll uncheck the width up here 
and set that to zero. What that will do is scale it from the middle. Now what's important is you want to check your keyframes, making sure that as you select them, that looks pretty good. There's the first one. Make sure it's selected, control T, and I'm going to ungang those and just adjust the width down to zero. Okay, click commit, and you'll see that the line builds on. Now, if it doesn't appear that it goes all the way off the screen, you might need to make a few tweaks there. Let's go ahead and press control T there and just adjust the width until we truly hit 0%. I'll turn on opacity there and just set that to start at zero and very quickly fade back up to 100%. All right, so there's the line and it wipes on. And we could finish that out by simply fading in the back box. There it is. And as that wipes, we want the back box to come on. So we'll just twirl that down and keyframe the opacity going up to 100%, but starting at zero. All right, let's play that from the beginning. Logo pieces build on, boxes fade in, and it's completed. So, a very simple logo animation. If I'd like to spit that out for use in my video editing tool, I can do so. Let's go ahead and save that out by choosing File Export, Render Video, and if you'd like embedded transparency, just choose the Adobe Media Encoder, go to QuickTime, and you can go with the animation codec. That will allow you to choose to embed an alpha channel if you'd like by just coming down here, and I recommend that you do a straight alpha channel and render out the file.